let the bass kick. Hello, jazz hands, and I think that's the right camera. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. So, uh, what up, everybody? Welcome to episode forty-two of Last Cash. I'm Will McCaskill. I'm still Marcus. He's still Marcus Rogers, Coach Marcus Rogers, and uh, Doctor Hoy is saving babies. Jay is uh, going to Kentucky, Kentucky to retrieve uh, one or more of his babies, and uh, yeah, so it's just us tonight. And we actually, uh, we have a really cool episode tonight. This is kind of delayed in the making. We've been trying to make this happen for the last week or two. Um, but we got to sit down just a few minutes ago and talk to five-time junior world champion and five-time junior distance world record holder, Nicholas Duran, P- uh, PDGA number 28359. So really awesome conversation. Uh, Nick was obviously a phenom as a junior player in 10 and under and in higher uh, age protected junior divisions. And right around the time he turned 18, uh, he hit him and his girlfriend got pregnant with their child. And so he's been absent from the tour for the past couple of years, but he's making his comeback. He played his first PDGA event in a couple of years back in February. And then this past weekend, he competed in his hometown in a tournament called King of the Mountain in Pine Top Lakeside, Arizona. So we're going to talk to him about that and what's next for him. He's heading to Las Vegas to compete, and he's hoping to come here to Nashville in September for the Music City Open. Whether or not he can get in remains to be seen, but if not, then we're going to throw him in as Lashcast podcast staff and get him doing some media stuff, I think. Going to be fun. Great idea. Yeah. Good guy. Yeah, really good dude. Really good kid. Uh, really good head on his shoulders. I call him a kid. I'm an old man. <laughs> um, but that being said, we kind of wanted to get him in and out as quickly as possible. But there's been some uh, recent developments and stuff as far as MCO news and things of that nature. And we thought we would come and give you guys a quick little update. We just had our first official volunteer staff, uh, volunteer and staff meeting for the Music City Open last Thursday at Central Barbecue. That was a big success. We had a bunch of people over there. I think it was probably close to 20, 30 people. Um Got to meet, uh, got to introduce everybody to our volunteer coordinators, Justin Morris, J-Mo, and Erica Bergstrom. Golf snaps to you guys. I got to meet J-Mo's mom, too. That was pretty cool. Hello. Yeah, J-Mo's mom, Juanita, is uh, going to be joining us as a volunteer, and she's getting into disc golf now. He was texting me the other day, yesterday, saying that uh, he had her out at Henry Horton with his wife and kids and everything. For I think they were there for Tony Bauer's birthday, and uh, and she was throwing around a Last Cash podcast maverick. No way. Pretty psyched about that. Sweet. Yep. It's all special. Touches you right in the warm and fuzzies. Um, Speaking of Last Cash Podcast Discs, you guys are going to be excited to hear this. I have a new order of Last Cash Podcast Discs on their way. And guess what we got this time? What we get? We got some Opto Ballista Pros. I'll throw one. Yep. We got some VIP Harps. I would not throw that. It's too stable. Pretty good, though. <laughs> it's a good and... disc. It's a great disc. It's just too stable for me. I've got a girl arm. Aww. And <laughs> bless his heart. And we also got just a few of these to see how uh, the popularity is. But this is a disc that I have known and loved for many years. But the VIP Westside Tursus it has now become available in the custom stamping area of Dy- the Dynamic Disc Warehouse. So uh, thank you to my sponsor, Dynamic Discs. Thank you to my team managers, uh, Gabe Diaz Serrano and um, uh, Serrano Diaz. I always put his names backwards and Eric McKay. Um, But, and everybody, uh, you know, Matt in Matt Sedgwick and customs, the stamping guys. Thank you for everybody that uh, helps make these beautiful discs. I always tell them to let the stamping guys go nuts, pick colors and all that stuff. So, and they always do a fantastic job. So those will be coming soon and we'll have those available at local events. Um, yeah, if you guys are interested in volunteering, I can give you some pretty detailed information as far as what it's going to look like to be a volunteer for the 2021 Music City Open. So you are going to contact uh, ncovolunteer2021 at gmail.com for information about volunteering. You'll be speaking with Justin Morris, who is our volunteer coordinator, 
and we are going to be offering uh, morning and afternoon shifts, six hours roughly on either side. And uh, some of these are going to be available starting as early as Wednesday when we have uh, player check-in and players pack pickup and all of that good stuff. And then also going, you know, to into the fly party, we're going to need volunteers at the fly party and all the courses for the A tier, especially the courses for the NT Cedar Hill and Mill Ridge. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have a big need for volunteers this year. So we do need help if you're not playing in the Music City Open and you would like to get all up in the mix and close and personal with the action. Uh, volunteering is the best way to do it. So if you pull one volunteer shift during the tournament, uh, that is going to get you a voucher to Music City Disc Golf to redeem for merchandise. Uh, if you work two six-hour shifts or more, then you're going to get a full volunteer pack, and this is going to be with Music City Open exclusive merchandise. Um, this is stuff that's in the player's pack. I don't know if they're going to be identical, but you're going to get a volunteer pack with a bunch of really cool merchandise. Um, on top of that, you're going to get to eat free from the food vendors during the event. You are also going to have access to uh, an exclusive staff and volunteer party following the tournament. Uh-oh, party time. Yep. So info at musiccitydiscgolf.com, uh, mcovolunteer2021 at gmail.com. Those are the email addresses for you to know and love. And if you have questions for us, you can use lastcashpodcast at gmail.com, just if you feel like it. Um, and I'll get back to you when I can. Uh, so yeah, volunteering is going to be off the hook. You guys are going to want to do that. We're going to have a big need at the NT courses, even after the A tier. So, uh, you know, if you're playing in the A tier and you would like to volunteer on the final day at Mill Ridge, we're going to need help with crowd control and all of that stuff. So holler at us and get plugged in. Uh, vendors, you guys are going to have a lot of access to information coming up soon. We're building, we have the disc golf scene registration page for vendors available. We're going to be fleshing that out, adding some things to it. Uh, myself, Dr. Zachary Hoy, Robert Zavala, and Danielle Dobbs went out today to meet with uh, the owner at Music Valley Village, which is where we're going to be hosting the fly party this year. This was, you know, this is the fly party is always one of our most favorite parts of Music City Open, and we did not get to have one last year due to the COVID 19 pandemic. Um, those of you that have played the Music City Open for several years are familiar with uh, Little Harpeth Brewing. We used to have our fly party out back there and cram a whole bunch of vendors out there, and we would have a big, real, t- uh, real big time. But this year, we're moving over to Music Valley Village, and we're going to have a big, gigantic parking lot for all the RVs to set up. We're going to have an indoor space for you guys to come and pick up your players' packs. Um, all sorts of cool uh, businesses are right there on site, and they're going to be involved with it as well. And the uh, host hotel, this is important for everybody. We do have a host hotel this year, and it is right there on location, on site, where we're going to be having the fly party. It's basically going to be Music City Disc Golf's base of operations for the tournament. It's right there off Music Valley Drive by Opryland, uh, Opry Mills Mall, all that stuff. So uh, it, right up there in the mix, our host hotel is the Inn at Opryland. And they have uh, secured for us a rate of one twenty nine ninety nine a night. And that, if you guys are familiar with getting hotel rooms in Nashville, that is dang near unheard of. That that low of a rate at Opryland. Like, and it's a nice hotel. We walked around in there today. Um, new, modern, secure, awesome. And they're also hooking us up with a conference room that we're going to get to use for media stuff. So all good news there. So uh, look at the disc golf scene registration. If you're interested in vending, we have uh, opportunities at the fly party, also at the award ceremony at Mill Ridge on Sunday, uh, different prices and all that stuff. Whole sponsors and other sponsorship opportunities are about to become available as well. Um, the A tier whole sponsorships, I believe, are already available, $100 a piece. If you would like, uh, contact Music City Disc Golf about those. Um, there will be a Disc Golf Scene registration page for NT whole sponsorships, which are going to be uh, baseline $150, and your logo will be placed on a custom drum head, which you will get to keep after the event. Uh, we are off, we're looking at building in a couple different tiers, uh, possibly one at $300, where you also are sponsoring a cooler for water for the players out there. And um, also, uh, some different other things that are f- leaving my brain right now. But um, yeah, so whole sponsorships are coming available soon. If you're interested in sponsoring the NT, uh, you can reach out or the HR, you can reach out to info at musiccitydiscgolf.com and the good folks at MCDG will direct your query appropriately. Um, so yeah, those are all new things. 
definitely want to hype up the host hotel because it's awesome. It, you know, it's one thing where you know Danielle was telling me about all the space, and I was relieved to have that space. But today, actually getting to see it, it's like now I'm excited. Well, it's a great location because you got the little mini golf around the corner. Mm-hmm. You got Opry Mills right next door. Um, you're right in between your sandwich between Cedar Hill, your sandwich between Seven Oaks. You know? Two Rivers is right around Two the Rivers corner. Two Rivers right around the corner if you want to do a little practice Multiple round. Multiple restaurants and bars. Uh, you can walk around Opry Mills Mall. I mean, there's so much you can do right there. Live music. There's the Texas Troubadour Theater, There's yeah. which is not open yet. That'll be coming back as the Nashville Troubadour, I think. And then, But they do have the Nightlife, uh, the Music City Nightlife or Nashville Nightlife Theater that's right there. There's axe throwing on site. There's an escape room. There's a recording studio. You can record in a studio here, so yeah. I'm just saying, if anybody wanted to record a hit song, we can hit, make hits here. We make true. hits. That's true too. I'm saying if it, if they weren't going to be around long, like if they were at the fly party and they wanted to go and get the band back together and go bang out a hit real quick. All right, that's the only reason. Yeah, if they want to get the band back together. Any, yeah. Anything else? Yeah, come but, to the Sapphire yeah, Lounge. Come to the Sapphire Lounge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna... I was so serious about that. Look at me in the eyes. <laughs> 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 no, we're doing it here. We're recording the song here. If there's any recording happening. It's here. I mean, we can definitely do it. We had Chris Harrison here, and that guitar sounded pretty good on he the old soundboard there. Yep, yep, we yep. Should, I'm going to revisit that episode and listen to him. He got down that day. He really did, man. I, I often go back and listen to that. It was a good one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you guys, if you have not already, get on Disc Golf Scene uh, and buy your Spectator badge because... Uh, you know, we don't have a cap on this yet, but once we get over a thousand and start pushing towards 2000, that's going to limit the availability of these things on site day of. So the best way to make sure that you get access to spectate is going to be by going ahead and purchasing your access now. And just to go ahead and run through some information that we do have available. I mean, this is a pretty low uh, bar of entry to spectate at a national tour event comparatively to the rest of the tour. Uh, this $20 badge is good for the entire event, so you don't have to purchase uh, access each day. Um, we are going to have at Cedar Hill the first two days. I know a lot of you will be playing in the A tier, so uh, you know the spectating will be more limited the first two days at Cedar Hill just due to the nature of the course. We can't have people uh, galleries falling around the cards. Uh, that will interfere with media and all that stuff, but we are marking out spectator areas that will allow you to cycle through them and catch the action as it, as it comes through. And... That might just foster an experience where you get to see more of your of your favorite players. So that's what we're hoping for anyway. And then at Mill Ridge, uh, you will not have to pay for parking. There will be shuttles in operation. So I am uh, nailing down the location of the shuttle lots. But we are going to be running shuttle buses for spectators to get you to Mill Ridge. And there's plenty of places nearby to do so. So it's not going to be like a 20-minute shuttle ride. It'll be two shuttle buses that hold up to 24 people running the entire length of both of the last two days. So, um, that's going to be dope. Uh, but yes, so make your plans now, check out the host hotel info at music city, If you have any questions, but please read the information on the disc golf scene pages, because the about sections of those registration pages have just about all the information that you could want. Um, if not follow 2021 music city open presented by dynamic discs on Facebook. That is our page for the event. All the official information will be posted there. Um, multiple other Facebook pages. You can follow me, the podcast on Facebook, on Instagram, and you'll see a lot of the information too. But um, yeah, that's those are the ways that you're going to stay keyed in and in the loop. Um, I'm sure there's other stuff that's come to light. Oh, we just, uh, Saturday, we just had our first official work day at Mill Ridge. So big golf snaps to everybody that came out and helped. Um, I don't, man, I, I know if I, if I tried to you're run through the names, somebody. I miss somebody and yep. I feel like a dick. Mm-hmm. But um, we'll put a picture up. Yeah, actually, yeah, we'll put a picture up right here. Dink. Yeah. Um, the because I did take some pretty good pictures. Uh, yeah. The uh, but we went ahead and hauled the turf that we harvested from uh the sports facility. I want to say it's tr- I know it's Trig. I think it's Trig Wilson is the name of the of the facility. But Ryan Shillette, uh his family, uh, his him and his girlfriend's family uh, that have the sporting facility. We got all that turf out and we stored it. It kind of staged it at Cane Ridge in the maintenance area over by Hole Two. And we just finally hauled all those rolls of turf over to Mill Ridge. Uh, we have a meeting coming up with the Metro Parks Board just to make sure that uh, our site our site plans are approved of and all that good stuff. And then we can start getting to work um, around the clock. So the gravel will be dropped off. Miami and Badass Pads Incorporated will be out there hitting the course, putting in our awesome Badass T-Pads. 
And then the rest of us will just start cutting fairways and greens and walking the course, prettying the place up. Yeah, we're gonna haul baskets out there at some point. So we're we're still aiming for at least one test event by the end of August. So uh, stay tuned for information on that. That will also be posted in all the places I listed before. Um, but yeah, we're going to get out there and play it as much as we possibly can leading up to MCO. And then of course it'll be open the whole week leading up to the tournament. So, um, and for anybody that hasn't heard me say this, yeah, we are pulling to get this installed permanently. We are aiming to develop the most sweet and primo championship course that we possibly can. And Sean Sinclair, the, his design is phenomenal. This is a big Uh, I mean, it's open and technical. There's elevation, there's trees, there's water, there's all sorts of cool stuff. It's going to be an awesome course to watch on coverage as well. Um, But, you know, once the tournament happens and Metro and the Friends of Mill Ridge Park have seen what disc golf can look like there, you know, the Friends of Mill Ridge Park group is excited about disc golf. They want it to be a part of what they can offer the community. Um, And so this is a, a big step forward for disc golf in Nashville because, if we are able to successfully get this course put in the ground permanently, that's uh that's a course that can hold elite series and major events in Nashville for years to come. I can't wait. It's going to be a great time. Yep. So that's a pretty good uh, introduction, shorter episode this week, but the good news is you guys, this is the first remote podcast, remote, remote guest that we've had for a while through zoom. You guys that have seen, uh, followed the show for a while, you know that some of our episodes, like with Holly Finley, that one was a mess just because of the connection. I'm always griping about the Wi-Fi here. Marcus is always griping about me getting a dongle that we can actually (laughs) plug plug the internet into the the computer. Get a dongle. So guess what? I got the dongle. We've got the dongle. I got the dongle. We're plugged into the internet right now. And um, of course, as soon as we... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Push the red button with Nick. Uh, a massive thunderstorm rolled over the studio, and we had a couple little laggy moments. But once the storm had passed, man, it was smooth sailing. I didn't see one little glitch or lag. It looked really good. I oh, felt yeah. I felt good about that, which is great news because we've got some remote guests coming up. Or, or guests that I have been talking to about being on the show that we're going to have to do remote and are totally worth it. Um, we're going to be speaking with somebody from Bushnell over the next uh, near future. Um, I met one of the representatives of Bushnell uh, at DDO this year. So I got his business card. We're going to talk to him. We still have to get uh, Corey Fuqua, our friend uh, who is, um, he's basically become the course steward, course captain at Ashland City at John C. Poole walking park in Ashland city. But he's also uh, a lot of you guys are familiar. If you've been watching gatekeeper, um, you guys are familiar with trash Panda who's been, uh, who has invented their own technology for recycling discs and making and making new molds. So we actually have a local here, Corey, who is uh, designing his own machine to do just that recycle plastic, make new discs. Um, so to have somebody doing that locally is pretty interesting. And I just recently found out that he is actually the person over uh, Ashland city's nine hole course, Justin JMO. And I went out there and played it. So uh, we're going to be having him on soon. A lot of cool stuff coming up and I'm excited. It's a great time to play this, play disc golf. Yeah, man. And I've actually, you know, this is the first time in a while. I actually get to enjoy this, uh, this exciting time of getting ready for MCO. Cause I don't have to worry about oh, the 9 million you. other things oh, that the club has going to play on. golf. Well, you know, I'm, little by little, I'm getting, I'm getting <laughs> some more in there and, and that only will increase, but yeah, it's a good time, man. I'm feeling really good about things. Everything is moving right along and it's so awesome to see this every year. It always happens like this, but all the things that we're worried about and concerned about is they just resolve themselves. We have an awesome community here. Um, man, just, I'm so excited to be promoting disc golf in Nashville. I, w- I there's nowhere else I want to be every time we, uh, you know, the community knows what we're trying to build. And every time we ask for help, everybody comes running. And so, you know, the sky's the limit and this year's music city open is going to be one for the record books, man. It, it's going to be awesome. I'm super excited. Yeah. The excitement's definitely going around. You can feel everybody just like, Hey, uh, when's, when's it going to happen? Uh, what are we going to do? All the questions just means that. They're building up the excitement for everyone else. Yep, absolutely. Um, so reach out if you guys are interested in sponsoring, vending, spectating, all that stuff. Uh, information is out there, and we are very excited to have everybody in Nashville in September. So uh, keep building the hype, you guys, and uh, and we will get there. The oh, I wanted, I did want to tease the players pack a little bit because um, a bunch of things are confirmed. We're getting ready. I mean, we're placing all the orders now. You guys, this the players pack in the Music City Open is going to be off the chain this year. Now, 
a lot of people don't understand how this works. It's a very delicate tightrope that you have to walk. Creating a successful event in terms of fiscally successful is a very maintaining a very delicate balance. And especially when you're talking about an, like the A tier tournament where your overall divisions, you've got all your divisions, a lot of amateur divisions and a lot of amateur players for these amateur players. You're trying to create this magic formula of a positive experience where they get, you know, everybody wants good payout. Everybody wants a nice players pack. Everybody wants all this stuff. And that all comes out of the same money, you know? So it's, if you have an amazing players pack, your payout is not going to be uh, up to standards for most people. So to let everybody know how this works, um, you know, the biggest tournaments in the world, like glass blown open, uh, dynamic disc open is a great example. This is a national tour event with an A tier concurrent and the players packs are legendary. You know, they have the like that is the standard in disc golf that everybody aims to hit is in terms of players packs is GBO DDO. And they're always phenomenal. They always have a ton of awesome stuff. Well, we're we've been trying to edge our way towards the DDO model for quite some time now. And you guys, the players pack this year, over two hundred dollars worth of stuff in there. You're gonna your minds are gonna be blown at the custom merchandise that we've got for this year's players pack. Um, payout in turn is gonna be smaller. This is just something to expect. Uh, you are going to get an immense value, you know, your players pack with what we are, you know, paying for all this stuff. It's just going to be phenomenal. You guys are going to, ha- you're going to be blown away. And, but just, you know, this is just an opportunity to explain to you guys how this stuff works uh, at DDO for the amateurs there. It, it is a trophy only event for the amateur divisions. And there is a bonus payout for the top 10, but then in time on top of that, you get that huge players pack. So, this is uh this is going to be you you see this more with the bigger tournaments in Nashville is as bi- just about as big as it the Music City Open just about as big as it comes now so uh, prepare yourselves to start seeing that model um and you know if you look at the leaderboards at all these events man you you've all, you're seeing a ton of people in advanced and intermediate by far I mean bigger than any other two divisions put together it's always huge and their scores are not that far off par. For, uh, definitely from each other and oftentimes not from MPO. So right. this is uh, one of those things where I like to say, hashtag move up. You know, if you're, uh, if you're not liking your payout in an Dude, amateur division, play my rating, bro. You better stop that right now. I'm going to play my rating. Yeah. I mean, you're getting, you're just playing for free stuff, man. That's all you're doing. If you, if you you want to further your game, step up, level up, you, you know, well, start playing with people that are better than you, I guess. I don't know. Well, everybody's better than me. So who wants to play? Hey, I, I'm not better than you. <laughs> I want to play with you. Uh, yeah, so without further ado, you guys, uh, we're going to jump right into our conversation with five-time world champion Nick Duran, PDGA number 28359. On the podcast, on the podcast, the last cast. Uh. Thundering where you're at or where we're at? 
Because I'm hearing it's, thundering like in the headphones. That bro, can't be a good sign. It is raining so hard outside right now. I'm kind of scared for us. <laughs> oh, real? Yeah, well, we're inside in the air conditioning. Finally, I've been riding around in a van with no AC all day, and it's hotter you, you than You can crap. see I got that blue Arizona sky. Man, what's the temperature like up there right now? Oh, man, I think it's like 72 right now, so <sighs> I'm in heaven. I would love for that. I am so jealous, man. I'm um, hearing for that. So yeah, in Nashville right now, it's like 92, feels like 99 because it's like mega humid. And then it's been raining off and on all day today. But anyway, yeah, we finally pushed the record button. Now we're just going to chit chat about the weather. What up? <laughs> um, everybody listening at home, watching at home, joining us tonight, very special guest. I am very excited for this episode. This is episode 42, I believe. Um this uh, joining us tonight is a another world champion. We've had a few of those on the podcast now, but this is a five time world champion, five time distance record holder. This is my friend in, uh, and you're in Lakeside or Pine Top right now. Same time. Okay, Pine, Pine Top, Top Lakeside, Lakeside, Arizona. I always forget that. This is Nicholas Duran. Everybody golf snaps for Nicholas Duran. Nick and I. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, man, I've been I've been following you and connected to you for a while. You're a part of a, a dynasty family in Arizona disc golf, and and your dad's a course designer, friends with the guy that got me into disc golf, and uh, you. I mean, you have such a huge legacy. Tell the folks at home a little about you, where your disc golf journey started. Give us a quick rundown, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty. Uh, so start out with the simple. I'm Nicholas James Duran. Uh, I'm 22 years old. Uh, I am a father to a two-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old son right now. Um, I've been playing disc golf for roughly about 17 years, 18 years, right around there. I've taken some time off here and there and did my own stuff for a while, having my son right there. Um, like I said, I got five world records. I've won my fir first uh, world record when I was seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I, I went for a while there. Um, and those are just for distance at those age, age protected groups. Uh, I have three world championships in under 10 when I was like seven, eight, nine. Then I jumped up to 10 and under or 13 and under, uh, one, one up there. And then I went to 16 and under in 2014 over in or 2013. I want to say it was actually in Emporia, Kansas and locked up my fifth right there. Um, I've been all over the world. In the 40 states, three countries so far, just throwing these beautiful discs, hanging out and meeting new family all over the world like this. Yeah, man, I that's the biggest thing in the world to me. That's I'm really excited. And for uh, and for you and everybody at home, I apologize for any weird audio stuff and uh, lag because we don't do a lot of remote podcasts for the express reason that all kinds of stuff goes wonky and it's like an opportunity for technical difficulties to happen and. I'm hearing a little bit of a jumpy thing going on, so that could be just the monitor. I don't think it's translating over to the recording, but if it is, I apologize, everybody. Uh, Nick is one of few people that I will make an exception to, to my no remote podcast rule. You're definitely somebody that I think uh, is worth putting up with the lag for. Um, man, you've been on a crazy run in disc golf your whole life, starting from a real young age, and I am so excited because... You, as you were approaching 18 years old, it was like me and everybody else that was paying attention was super excited to see where you went and what you did. And then life happened and you weren't able to jump on the road and really pursue your dreams the way you wanted to because you were uh, handling your responsibility and, and having a child. And, um, and I'm just so excited to see you coming back to competition and you just kicked it off this weekend at the King of the Mountain and you and Devin Owens were neck and neck just about the whole time. Tell us a little bit about your uh, tournament experience this weekend. Uh, so top, top of the Pines or King of the Mountain this weekend was a great time. Uh, like you said, I got to play with Devin Owens, Connor Rock, and a couple of the best people that I've ever got to meet in Arizona. Some of my best friends out here. Um, it was a different feeling because the last tournament I played was about six months ago, and I actually took that one down, if you look on the PDGA. But um, it was such a different rush because – you. I played three, four tournaments in the past three, four years, and that's about it. And it was just always just been for fun. I never really practiced much into it. I never really cared to get just like focused up into it again. It was just something that I enjoy. I enjoyed being out there and having fun. But this weekend I went in with a different mentality, a lot more practice. Um, since it's been so long since I've had such practice like this and 
just working my mental aspect. I felt very like a lot of nerves going on at first. And uh, this weekend was to work through those and get through those and get ready for everything that's about to come. And, you know, having Devin Owens there, that helped me and kind of put a perspective on where I should be and where I need to be and what I need to practice on because it's Devin Owens, man. You hear about him all the time. <laughs> for sure. And he's been around for a long time in uh, and on leaderboards for a long time. And I know people that play, you talk about it a lot, Marcus, people that play – uh, have been playing for some time in the pro division seem to uh, perform at their best when they have somebody that really pushes them and is uh, is giving them a run for their money. You got that right. Like if I'm playing with a no, DJ, yeah. if I'm playing with Logan, oh, I can put that day. I can drive that day. <laughs> <laughs> got the game on lock that oh, day. Oh, yeah. Huh? You, can't be, you can't be embarrassed in front of your friends and your peers and you know the people that look up to the people that you're playing with. So. I know that uh, you mentioned, of course, there was the Sholo freeze back in February that you won. And I know, uh, give us a little bit of a, an idea how much you've actually been playing or training during the time that you've been out of competition. So for about the past three years, I haven't taken this game at all seriously. It's been, it's been a good time for me. I would go out with my friends, hang out, and just go throw Frisbees. And that's all it was for me. It's just another release and just that extra pastime when I had it, you know, and that's what all it was for me for a while. And it, it it was very good to come back and feel that, like that I took that time off and get the clear headset, clear mind. Uh, I worked a lot on my body. I've gotten a lot better fit and ready and, you know, coming back, especially even for that, uh, the freeze right there, I, I wasn't practiced up or anything. I think I practiced about three days before that tournament and that was about it. But for about the past three months, it's been working and grinding. So, I mean, I got to say, for being off for that long, I mean, not off because you say, as you said, you've been playing kind of casually and stuff. But, I mean, for being out of competition for that long, man, you're pushing a 1,000 rated golf in the first two tournaments that you've come back to. I mean, you were 986 to, to, uh, to win the freeze. And now, you know, you're pushing 970, 980 golf, uh, coming back with the King of the Mountain. And I call this your comeback tournament this past weekend, just not only because it's been like this past six months break or whatever since uh, the freeze, but you're planning on si you're, you're signing up for events like you're you're hitting the road, at least right now, close to Arizona, close to your area regionally. But you've got big plans uh, for especially for the 2022 season, correct? So give him a minute. Let let the let, let the storm. We're gonna give him a minute. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, true, true. I can't even blame it on the Wi-Fi now because we got it hooked up to the hard line. Yeah, we're hard line <laughs> in. Yeah, true. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah. I saw him move a bit. Hey, we got him. He's back. I'm here. Hey, All right. So I think the last we didn't actually we didn't have to go back to a certain spot because we didn't hear anything that you said. So. um yeah, so how do you feel? I mean, I know it's important to find a way to get back to a place where you enjoy playing golf, and it sounds like that's what you've done because you're coming out strong. I mean, these first two tournaments back, you're you're pushing 1,000 rated. You're right up there like the freeze. You were at 986. Um, so you you got to be feeling pretty strong. Yeah, I definitely think at the freeze, I think I averaged, averaged like a 990, I think it was at that point. I think that's what the numbers – I don't know 100% anymore. Yeah. And then this this past weekend, I uh, averaged uh, ten oh four for the three rounds, and you know that's good. I, I enjoy that number. A thousand's always been a been a goal of mine. The closest I've ever been on my actual rating is nine nine six, and so to kind of get those thousand rated rounds going again and in the blood, it feels like I got something there. I know I got I got I can do it, and I got work to get to that next ten thirty. Yeah. For for me right now, it seems like that um, thousand rating is more important than it was a couple years ago. Do you feel that way? Oh, I throw a question out there. Look what happens. Uh, what, just, why did I do that? It's a storm pass, and of course we we would have that luck. Uh, why did Marcus want to? Well, Here we go. See if he can fix this on my side. There he is. Oh. Yeah. We got the audio. The video went away. <laughs> there we go. He's back. Okay. We got him again. All right. We're just going to have fun with All this. All right. Sweet. We, we, we got yeah, I turned off my Wi-Fi. We, we, <laughs> <laughs> I would say we talk crap about him when we don't have him on the screen, but then he probably can hear everything he can we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll join you guys and talk crap back. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're going you're gonna to be right at home in Nashville, man. Let's go. 
Um, but yeah, oh, man, I'm excited to be out there in September. You're uh, you're heading out for Vegas. Yeah, so uh, I actually head out uh, Wednesday is the plan to go out to Phoenix for a day or two, go get some practice over there. Elevation's kind of different uh, for, for me. I'm up here at 6,000 feet right now. I got beautiful pine trees behind me and everything. And going down to the lower elevation, 1,000, 2,000 feet right there, which is Vegas and Phoenix, uh, it's a lot of difference. It's a, it's a whole different game, actually. It's My discs don't fly the same, so... I'm going to try to go adjust for a couple days and then I'm going to go spend a day out in Vegas practicing up for, for the clash. And I'm really, I have really high expectations out there. I played decent out there before and I, I love the courses out there. It's a good time. And uh, I feel like they fit my game. You know, I, I got, I got a big arm in there somewhere. So, yeah. And you seem like you're, you're excited. And I mean, uh, that, uh, that pressure, I mean, obviously it's nothing new to you being that you've competed in world championships before, but now, you know, obviously you're competing in NPO and the King of the Mountain was a good example. You're, you're, you're out there going to be going toe to toe with some of the best in the game. And, uh, how competitive do you feel right now? I know that in the last couple of years, there's been a big push in fitness and nutrition among disc golf athletes. Or is that a part of how you're get preparing to get back into traveling? Uh, give us a little bit of an idea of what you're doing to prepare and condition your body. So I actually love that you talked about that right there. And um, I've reached out to many of disc golfers. I've talked to Eagle. I've talked to Simon. I've talked to a couple of the bigger guys, Ricky, all these guys. And, you know, they're all saying doing the disc golf strong is getting them to where they need to be and feeling, feeling like they're at their best. And, I'm starting on that. I'm starting to get a little bit into some yoga and getting my body more prepared more than it is right now. But I think the one thing that's always like held me just a hair back is, is the mental game in my life. And I finally feel like I'm at the point where it's just like, I I'm ready to just show not just myself, but also my son a lot is that if you can put your mind to anything, you can actually absolutely do it. And a lot of this is for him. And I want him to realize one day that, Hey, he, he, his dad went out there and just set his mind to it and did it. So there's a lot more than just my heart going into it. It's a, it's a lot of my love. It's all of my heart. It's my son's heart and it's, it's my time for him. So, so it feels like for me, whenever I take time off, did I get a little bit better at disc golf? Do you feel the same way? So I honestly felt like I came back. I couldn't quite get anything online for a couple months and I was just struggling and it was just, it was hard to find the inspiration to get back and just fucking and just go for it. Sorry for my language. Oh, you're good, man. Uh, we, uh, yeah, here I got one of these. I can just throw up on here. I think <laughs> the profanity. Uh, I got a go. profanity alert. Boom. Ooh. We're covered. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And, I, but, um, it, it, and we're not live. So. Just, <laughs> True. There we go. But uh, it was, it was a different world, man. I mean, you go out there, you play with your friends, and you guys hang out casual. You go shoot a couple down here and there, and, you know, have fun. But it's it's the practice behind it and getting that mentality of, hey, you know, this is going to be my everyday job, and I got to take this shot 100% serious because this is what's what's feeding me and mine. Yeah. And it was it, it's just been a lot of field work, a lot of practicing, a lot of time sitting here and getting upset with myself over 25-foot missed putts all the time. and working on those and getting those kinks out until I'm ready to take one down and feel like that time is going to be coming up here shortly. And, uh, it's due. So. Absolutely. It is, man. And I know that had to have been uh, just knowing what kind of competitor you are that had to have felt like a huge loss. I mean, obviously, uh, nothing can compare to having your first child and, and all of the, the joyful emotions that you had to experience that, uh, in that in that regard, but I mean, n- being on track, like everybody looking at you to be a major competitor on the pro circuit, and then having to take that step away right when you were probably really gearing up to to do that, because I know this is a big part. Disc golf is a big part of your identity. Um, Definitely. I mean, how did you? Uh, how much of an impact did did that no longer being a part of your everyday lifestyle? How how much of an impact did that have on, on you? Was that something that you had to? find ways to cope with and uh so yeah definitely man i mean it it went down a dark hole for a very very quite some time right there and i wasn't always i wasn't the best up in my head and a lot of that was just because this is who i am this is my life this is what i do this is this is nick duran disc golf is nick duran i that's my 
everything, yeah. you know? So taking that, taking that away, it, it definitely hurt a lot of feelings. Uh, you know, I had a lot of family, a lot of supporters out there that, that I felt like I let down in a way. And I, I hated that feeling, man. I always hated that feeling. And even so more towards myself because that's the one for, person that supported myself no more than anybody else. Like I, I did absolutely everything for this game and I used to take my time, do everything. And it's just, it sucked to have that taken away for a bit, but in the same breath, like you said, man, it's the most beautiful thing in the world that I got to experience. And I wouldn't change it for the world because it honestly helped me get out of that dark spot and realize that this is what I need to do. And it, it, it took a long time to kind of process that is that, it, it wasn't a letdown for myself. If anything, it was something to grow me as a person and possibly even help me out, go into the next tournament feeling more proud and ready to take it on. So I definitely feel like I use that energy that people think as negative right there and just flipped it because I, you know, that's the only thing that you can do. Yeah. I mean, I know for me, man, I've always been grateful for disc golf being in my life just for the simple fact that it's, I mean, it helps me stay level mentally and emotionally. It, there's a, a mental, an emotional, a spiritual aspect to uh, the level at which I engage with disc golf. And I mean, for me, thankfully, because disc golf is so adaptive and, and accessible, I don't ever have to worry about not being able to have it in my life in some way. But not everybody ever has the the likelihood of competing with the top level athletes in our sport. And so I can't even begin to imagine like how much of a course correction, how weird that had to have been to just totally switch gears like that. I mean, I know how big of a part because I mean, and for, uh, you know, people here in our area may not be as familiar with you as people out West, but I mean, the Duran family is Arizona disc golf for sure. You guys have always been around and your, your dad is a, is a excellent tournament director and well-known uh, course director and promoter up there. So I mean, I can't imagine just the weight of all of those expectations and stuff that had to have been damn it. Like just a heart, a lot to deal with on its own. You know, especially being young, I felt like, uh, it was a lot that I didn't know how to quite process, especially when I got started getting into like the 15, 16 year years of age, when I started actually playing with all these guys on, on a regular and going out to these tournaments, it started adding up a lot of pressure that I wasn't quite a hundred percent ready for. And I, I let myself down on that one, but that's okay. And like I said, you know, it, it took those couple of years to get back and finally full hearted focus and mentality. It, it is a very hard thing to go from playing your A tier, B tier all over the state, all over your five, five states right around you, you know, and then to go out and spread to a whole other world, basically at a, such a young age. So it, it was a lot of pressure, but I definitely, I definitely got to take away. Like I said, man, I, I've, I got in that dark spot for a long time and I've had many people help me out of that spot. Disc golf's helped me out of that spot itself. And now it's just turning those moments that I think where I I've challenged in myself is saying, this is my challenge. This is what I do. This is what I got to do. So I definitely feel like it wasn't the hardest thing to, to like get into that heavy set mind like that again, but it was the physical aspect of it is making sure that I can do that and getting back to it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and I want to tell you just, you know, uh, as a friend, I mean, like I have seen, I mean, I haven't been around for a, a, nearly as long as a lot of the people that I operate with, not definitely not as long as Marcus, but I mean, I've been around long enough to see people crash and burn and then rise from the ashes. And I mean, like Scott Stokely is a perfect example, man. You know, he totally left disc golf altogether for like 13, 14 years. And he had a pretty wild ride in, in his time away. And he had brushes with the law and all sorts of stuff. And a lot of, you know, and by the end of it, he was, he had lost all of his self-confidence. He felt exactly like you described. He like he had let everybody down and all that stuff. And now to see what he's doing. And he just made the decision that he, that that was his life. He was going to embrace it. He was going to come back and, you're young. Just like you said, you know, you were young, you had a lot of pressure and expectations on you, but the great news is that you're young. 
You know, you have yeah, your definitely. ceiling is still way up above right. the top right. of your head, and you're a tall dude. But uh, I mean, like <laughs> you, six four, six four. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah I saw look. that picture. I'm like, hey, he's tall. Yeah, you're one of the few people yeah. that I have to kind of talk to a little bit like this. It makes me feel weird. <laughs> but no, man. Yeah. I mean, like you have so much time, and especially, you know, you think about it. You are well ahead of the game. I think everybody disc golfer or not disc golfer like everybody has a period in their life where they just kind of go off the rails like you know you know at certain points that you're not making the best decisions and you know that you're just kind of like going away from the path that you that feel, that is laid out for you and everybody does that and it looks different for everybody but i've seen it take people 60 years to live their life normally go off the rails come back and then like rebuild and then now they're 60 you've kind of run that whole race and you're back and you're still in your early 20s and you've got plenty of room to grow definitely i think what i think it's just that one thing is like i am so young man so why why shouldn't i why why can't i why why not and i definitely feel that a lot with everything that i do nowadays even my simple walk around life is is I can do whatever I want if I put my head to it. And uh, that's the biggest thing, you know, like you said, Scott Stokely taking those 14 years off. Josh Anton took five, mm-hmm. took six or whatever, you know, all these guys, Josh Anton came back and he won three A tier events in a row outside. Yeah. And nobody expected that. He put his mind to it and said that he could. There's so many other people. McBeth just got his 10, 10 mil for 10 years. Well, why, why can't I deserve that contract one day? And and that's what I want. I want to be able to make this my every day. This is what I want to provide for my family. This is this is what I want, and that that definitely has a big twist to it. Is watching all these, all of the new. Because when I was gone for those three four years, man, all of a sudden people are throwing seven hundred feet on on a dime on a whim. Mm-hmm. It's easy. Right. Where I was where I was a long guy bombing at five fifty six hundred feet, and I was feeling all proud of myself and. Yeah, so, I mean, it was crazy to see the, the game of disc golf evolve, and I just sat back and just watched it evolve, and it was just like, nah, man, I can't, I can't be sitting back and just watching. It's not, that's not who I am, and that's not where my heart will ever be. My heart is on those front lines. Well, I need your fire, man, because I'm gonna tell you, man, I, we're, we're on the same page. My son, he'll be um, three here in November. And, Plus, dude, and you know, one of the craziest things I heard was. Oh yeah, man. Uh, you're Marcus. Yeah, we heard you used to be good, man. I'm like, oh <laughs> no, uh, no. <laughs> that one. And I and I and I and I remember it. Like when he said that to me, I'm like, man, you're right. I used to win some of the bag tags. You know, I, I set a couple of records. People thought like, yeah, man, he's he's gonna always win. And now it's like, yeah, he had a kid. He's on the podcast. That's Marcus. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so I mean, kudos to you, man, because I want to know how you did it, dude. Because I came back and I'm like, I'm trying to get better, like back in my stride, you know, but. Shoot, you came back with two wins. I'm looking like, man, I'm I'm I'm, I'm averaging like 980, and you're mad about a 980 round. <laughs> uh, so it, it, yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's that same thing, you know. Is before I left, I knew where I was at, and I knew what I could do, and I knew that I was potentially the top top four, top five, and inside of the entire state of Arizona, and anywhere that I went, I knew that I could definitely be that top five guy, top three guy, and everything. So it was just the fact that. I've done it before. I know I've done it. I can go out there, do it again, and prove it to myself. But this time, it's it's more of a fire than just like, hey, let me go out there and go play, and let me go take my top spots, and let me go do my best and everything. Now it's like I I just have this burning in here, dude. That just I I want it out. I want this. I want all these emotions out there on that course, and I want to know everybody that I take this serious. Yeah, man, and I can tell you you know, just personally, because like we got to know each other a little bit online and stuff like that, just through association, um, through mutual friends and stuff like that. But I saw you pretty much close to right around the time that you left competition for a while, right there at a uh, DDO or GBO in 2019. And yep, I remember meeting you out there. Yeah. And I, I mean, one, you are somebody that I can definitely say, you know, uh, honestly, in all genuine, truthful speak, um, that you are very wise for your years, and, and you think on a deeper level than a lot of people your age tend to. And and so I can only imagine like just the change that's occurred in you as a person through having a child, 
But just through speaking to you face to face, I mean, the marked difference in your entire tone, your vibe, your aura, like you are like, there's no, I mean, and and people are going to see this the more visible that you become and the more that you're out on the road. But like there, I don't think like you're not going to have to convince anybody that you're serious. I can tell just from just your body language and the way that you're, you're speaking about this, this is, and I don't think it is a surprise to anybody that this is the path that you're going to take. Um, if anything, I think, you know, everybody kind of figured it was a matter of time until you started popping up again. And I'm, I'm super stoked that, that it's now and real quick, let's, uh, let's touch on something because as you're signing up for these tournaments, you know, you, you had a long time relationship with Innova and I'm sure you still do. Your family has ties to Innova. So, um, I know you are right now without sponsorship. And so you are looking for any of the, any help that you can get. And so when we post the podcast, we'll definitely link anything that you share with us. And we'll make sure that you shout it out before we end the, in the conversation, but uh, any, any just ways people can support you as you get your feet back out there on the road. Um, how is that? Like, are you, are you reaching out to anybody that you kind of had relationships with before? What's the networking and the business side of things looking at looking like for you right now? So I, I don't want to get too much into that because there's still a lot of stuff that I am working out with people and trying to figure out with. Oh yeah. I know how it goes. Do, are, yeah. Don't let me blow you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, without the back sponsorship, without the disc sponsorship, um, it, it's cool. It's whatever. I'm throwing all Innova still and as my heart's always rang true to Innova and always will. I mean, I, this is the one spot that I want to be. I want to be on their, their team. That's, that's where I've belonged for 11, 12 years before I jumped, jumped in. Yeah. You know, I, that, that's where, that's where I belong because, you know, you just said yourself, like, those are my family. So that's, that's my entire family. You know, my dad's over there sponsored with Innova. He's been sponsored for the past three, four years. I don't know. Sorry, dad. But, um, <laughs> it's been three or four yeah. years. I would, that's what I would say. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. But you know, it, it's much more than just like my dad, even just the family, you know, I go, I talk to all these guys on the regular. So like there's still people that I care about and everyday people in my life. And, you know, even, even them, those are a lot of the people I let down. So I'm trying to get back up on the road on that. And I won't say too much more, but there's a couple foundations that I'm, I'm trying to help with and get along with and try to make something more possible than just this golf itself. Yeah. So, you know, that one one that I'm trying to work with right now is actually our local autism foundation, and I'm trying to kind of work with them and spread the 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 awareness. And I won't touch too much more on that, but we're I'm trying to get something going on more than disc golf itself. Well, man, that's huge. And yeah, don't uh, say any more than you need to at the time to- at, at the moment. When you're ready to talk about it, though, I uh, you're welcome to come back on and and we'll put it out on the airways for you. I I definitely when we get off the air, I want to put you in touch with Stokely because. Um, he is like, he, he's big on doing free instruction and doing events for people with any kind of disability, but he's got a special place in his heart for autism. And so he might be able to point you in the direction of some resources too. Uh, Definitely. Thank you for that. I would love to message Scott again. It's been a while. So yeah, I've, I've been talking to him. I was actually, he's texting me like five, six times. I need to respond to him, but, um, he's coming to do it. (laughs) He's coming to do a seminar and a clinic this weekend. Um, so that's another big thing that I think is a probably good to touch on for people. Every time somebody changes sponsors or is no longer uh, sponsored by a team, I think a lot of disc golf fans now, just with all the added attention that the sport is getting, it's almost like everybody kind of expects there to be some sort of reality TV element to um, to disc golf or like it's uh, there, there's some WWE sports entertainment happening and they assume that, there's all sorts of drama and damaged relationships and stuff like that. And uh, in my experience, man, everybody out there is friends. It doesn't matter who is sponsored by what company or what shirt anybody's wearing. I mean, I mean people will change partners like square dancers in disc golf and it, the relationships sure. are there. There's very few people that don't get along. So, um, I can't. Everyone has a game face on, you know, right. when you see them like in on, on the, on the, you know, Joe Mez on, on the, you know, different shows, whatever you, you just see their, go- their, their, their game faces. Like, Oh my God, is he like super mad all the time? Is he, you know, upset about his realm? Yeah. Like, no man, you're like, he's a, he's a real person. You know, he's actually going out and doing his job. That's why he has that face on. That's why he's winning. Yeah. Whoever exactly. he is. He's doing his job. <laughs> yep. yep. You know, whoever Definitely. he is. And I mean, it could be Nicholas. It could be, you know, Paul, whoever it is, you know, 
So um, I'd like to know those people as well, you know, because. Yeah. And I think I'm there's nice an guy. element of that. Like if there's an element of theatrics or showmanship, I definitely think it, it comes down to the players just kind of hamming it up. Like, you know, elevating the tension between them oh, and, yeah. and, and a rival. You know what I mean? Just because it's fun for the audience. It's good or for the sport. Yeah, it's great. It, it increases right. the numbers for sure. But the relationship, I mean, like sponsorships, I mean, like, yeah, it's business. So both people, whether the person being sponsored and it, or it's the, the person doing the sponsoring, I mean, both people are looking to create a r- relationship that's mutually beneficial in a business sense. But those personal relationships don't dissipate just because you're, you know, there's not a contract that's in effect or anything. Right. So. We all here throwing this, throwing Frisbees in a park, you know, I mean, if, if anybody wants to get mad about that, you know, I think it's the wrong sport for them because this is one big family at the end of the day. You support me. I support you. You support, support anybody that throws a disc because we all got that one thing that's always in common right there. And you can go anywhere in the world, dude, and go step on a disc golf course and you'll find one new friend that day. Yeah, I agree. And you're you're on the right track there too because obviously there's a there's a there's still a ton even as big as it's getting there's still a ton of opportunities to get into business within the industry of disc golf and create something more long term and and uh, with some lasting some staying power for yourself. But one of the other things that's really unique about disc golf is it's it's really open ended and it caters to being paired with all sorts of different stuff. Um, you can bring disc golf or bring another, uh, industry or another activity, you know, that it complements a lot of whole different outdoor recreation type stuff. Well, and it's an incredibly powerful engine for fundraising and for, um, you know, doing community outreach. And that's, I think always been the best and most sustainable way to grow the sport is to reach out to the community that doesn't know about it in a positive way. And, so to hear that you're working with uh, an autism foundation and you've got some things in the works there. I mean, I'm not, that also doesn't surprise me uh, coming from you, but it, that that's incredibly encouraging too. I think that disc golf being a force for good in the world is, is going to be the way we really kind of, you know, the scale, the group that, you know, I think about when I think of force for good is uh, disc and disciples. Yeah. Because true. very true, you yeah. know, um, I got out there with them uh, last week. Played around. Uh, we had a prayer before, you know, and this past weekend, um, uh, disc wings. They do that stuff too, I believe. Actually, is the, I don't know if that's the exact name. Disc wings. They used to go to the big tournaments and they used to go do their their morning prayers right before the rounds and all their yeah. sermons and stuff like that. And that stuff right there was always really not, like cool to me and. Uh, I appreciated that stuff. And I wanted to get something on along with that, you know, going every tournament and doing something or disc golf that's not even disc golf related yeah yeah it's hard i mean and i'm just you know full disclosure because this is just a this is just a hang but that's always been a tough thing for me in the role that i have served in disc golf up to this point uh being like the administrator of a large club or organization nonprofit organization um and it's you know when we would have tournaments especially particularly our bag tag series because those events largely are on Sundays and um, you know there would be a couple people from time to time that would make that suggestion or request that we have a moment for prayer before the tournament and for me in my spot it's hard to do that kind of stuff because you're dealing with a large group of people and you don't want to make assumptions about their beliefs or make anybody uncomfortable but it's really encouraging to me and awesome to see that there is a group out there that's providing a place that can really focus in on the spiritual aspect of disc golf, because whether you're religious or, or however you engage with uh, a spiritual pursuit in your life, there's no denying that there is a spiritual mechanism and and aspect to disc golf. I mean, uh, the Zen and the art of disc golf book really kind of thought touched on it really perfectly. Cause the gentleman that wrote that Patrick McCormick, he's, a Christian, but he also trained in martial arts his whole life. So he's familiar with Eastern philosophy and he just really kind of talks about the spiritual aspect of disc golf. And so uh, I think that's something that's very worth drawing attention to and highlighting. Very much. So I agree with that. So Um, that's, I mean, one of those ways that it kind of worms its way into our life um, and feeds that addiction and that obsession is I mean, you play disc golf, man, and it really, it has this just singular way of bringing imperfections 
in yourself to the surface for you to, to see them. You know, it, it's like the first place you can go to the easiest example is getting uh, bent out of shape over a bad shot and letting that affect your outlook and how you are engaging with others around you. Um, but I mean, it's every, it's everyday life, right? No, I've found this golf route correlates. So simple, man. Yeah. Is there any way that like, I mean, just thinking along those lines for me, um, I, it always made me very conscious uh, of what I represent and how I am. I portray myself to others. And if I give in to that weak spot, that I like when I'm playing disc golf, then even though I feel like that should be a personal experience for me is how I'm how, is like between me and the course and me and my round, like that knowledge, like that realization of how I appear to others when I give into that negative emotion and I start eating myself up and you can see it on a scorecard because your round just completely disintegrates from there once you allow that to happen. But that really helped me learn as a person when I start feeling emotionally agitated like that to take a second and just stop and put everything in its place and leave everything in its place. You know, it's one shot at a time. Disc golf exists one, one shot at a time. Life is one moment at a time, you know, and you can only control that moment. It's so many lessons exactly. like that. Is there anything like that that you've picked up on any way that disc golf has molded your outlook on life or how you in, interact with the outside world? So definitely, like like I said, when that deep spot came back into my life, I had so many more positive people enter when I needed it. And a lot, a lot of it has to do because of who I am with disc golf and everything that people wanted to see me be that person again and just that happy guy that I was. And a lot of it is just, like you said, you know, you take that step away and you truly look back. I mean, I'm sitting at one of the most beautiful places in our town right now. I got a beautiful lake behind me. It's just taking that moment to realize what's around you and realizing how blessed you are to even be outside and doing what you can, because there's so many people that are unfortunate, unfortunately, that just can't do this, something like this. So it's kind of like that moment that I realized in my head that this is a gift right now. This isn't something that like is just given to anybody. This isn't, you know, handed out. This is I've worked for this and this is what I I've done and just grateful for those moments. And if even on those bad throws, those bad holes like that, it's just I'm grateful to be there. You know, I can, I can have the worst round in America world right now. And I just, I'd be happy because I'm out doing what I love. at least. Mm. That I think is almost too, like an intangible part of the example uh, that you're going to set and the legacy that you're going to leave for your son. I mean, is your willingness to take a risk on your happiness and your, and, and your passion and, to move forward in a way in your life where you're actually, I guess, investing in yourself and in your future in, in a way. I mean, it's just our society is built around finding your way into a wheel into into like a rat, a hamster wheel and staying there for the rest of your life. And there are certain people that just can't do that. And you see a lot of them in disc golf. Um, but most people never even have an example in their life to point to of not doing that you're going to, that's going to be something huge that you're going to offer to your son. Definitely. I, I definitely feel like that's going to be something that I'm going to be able to teach him. And he's going to be able to just look back at the stuff that I've already done and just, just kind of get that mentality of, Hey, you know, that dad did this, I can do it and I can do it even better. Yeah. When's he getting that PDGA number? Oh, dude. What? Oh, don't put me on the spot right now. I forgot. <laughs> right now. Oh, did you forget? Oh, uh, oh, uh, we, uh, let me sponsor him. Right now. Will did, did me a favor. He got my boy. Uh, hey, PDGA if you haven't number. gotten it yet, I'll, the the podcast will sponsor his, his PDGA membership for sure. So, so uh, actually, I think, I, oh, I want to say uh, it's drawing a blank. Names are drawing a blank on me right now. It's so bad. The podcast Someone ended up. Do, podcast does that. <laughs> <laughs> right? It, it's Always, it's the, it's the anxiety that's still in there, just a hair. Um, no, someone actually, the day after he was, he was born, February 2nd, 2019, 20, uh, right there, he was born and ended up, he ended up getting his PDJ membership the very next oh, day. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Well, that makes more oh, yeah. sense. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That makes more sense so, than you forgetting he, to get his PDJ membership. It's like 140, 140. Yeah, it's up there. Oh, man. Yeah, I think he's like it, It's up there. It's, yeah, because I think my boy's a 146. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. That's, and, that's so crazy. And I think we've got like 
sixty thousand active members right now. I could be way off on that, but I hear I just heard those numbers recently, and I, I want to say that's pretty accurate. Somewhere around in the neighborhood of fifty, sixty thousand active members. That's huge. That's way more than we've ever had. Insane. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's huge. Definitely. Um, I got such a low PDJ. Dude, I was just thinking about, thinking about really that. Do, I was, man. I was like, I was trying to figure out like, how can I bring this up that his number is like twenty thousand lower than mine? I thought my number was low, and you're younger than me, and I'm like, God dang it! How many, what, what, what did I have to do? It's funny. Mom and dad got me one for like four or five when Christmas. Oh, time right that's there. how. Okay, I was trying to figure out myself. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. man, I've been playing for. I got my ten years, but how does he have? I'm like, I'm over here doing the math. Like the numbers are just like floating in air right now. I'm like, how did he get so much lower? But he's been he's been beating me for how long? And how old is he? <laughs> but I was but I was playing back then when I got that PDJ number. Like yeah. it, it wasn't yeah. anything serious. But I was out at the course with my dad and the local players up here. Still awesome. It, it wasn't so, honorary. I it was mean, legit. <laughs> it was legit back then yeah. So. <laughs> yeah i know man when i first got into it back in 2013 because i joined right away but i was like and i didn't really understand the significance of it then but i was out on the course around here with people with three four digit pdga numbers pretty regularly and like wow. i remember lamenting always like man if only i would have found this earlier and i could have gotten a lower pdga number mm -hmm. now I feel like I've got the special PDGA number most of the time because I'm five digits. <laughs> like, <I> mean, <laughs> right, I, right, mine true. starts with a six, but damn, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's a lot of people running around here with six-digit PDGA numbers yeah. these days. I'm, I'm 48, and you're 28. I'm just still like, man. And you're right in between me and him. He's yeah. 28. I'm 61, and you're yeah 48. There you go. Yeah, that's pretty Dang, great. man. That's funny. I'm the young guy here, and I got the low number, so that's the mm -hmm. What's up with that. I'm the only one that's not a dad. <laughs> <laughs> I got cats. <laughs> I got cats. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Next best thing, right? Yeah. So, uh, for the fo folks at home, for funsies outside of disc golf, what lights your fire? I know you're really into music. Is there something like a, a secret hobby that you don't always share with the world that you're really into? Writing. I love writing. That's my favorite thing, you can sit me down with a pen and paper and uh, I'll find my own home. Uh, I'll, I'll go there. And that, that's the spot, you know. I definitely love hiking, uh, finding those beautiful spots, like you say. And uh, I'm starting to get into photography a bit more. And I, I honestly want to get into sports photography, disc golf photography, focusing out. You know, you got, oh, I can't remember her name right now. He's either Alyssa. Uh, Alyssa. Alyssa Van Lannen. Alyssa. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Big shout out to her and all her pictures. She's, She's amazing. Awesome yeah. with that camera. Love that. You had Stu a couple of years ago. Just a whole bunch of people like that. Just seeing their Instagram and all these cool photos that are coming out on the PDGA site on Instagram and all this. So cool to see. And it's just, I, I would like to be the guy behind that camera one day having fun too. So, well, man, um, if you get to make it out here in September, bring your camera with you. We'll, uh, I'll hook you up with the, a media badge and you can, you can run around and get some, get some practice. I mean, dude, I'll tell you, cause we've had, uh, Brittany Dickerson, Chris's wife, he, uh, she was taking pictures at Music City Open last year, and she got a lot of really good stuff. And Brittany Barnett, uh, Team Innova, shout out to Brittany Barnett and Brittany Dickerson. Yes. Um, they were both out sweet, here taking sweet. great pictures. Uh, the more media, the better, man. And honestly, with all the attention we're getting and all the views going up and up and up, that's the that's the money maker to get to get into. If you've got a passion for photography, that that's something that could prove prove to be lucrative in perpetuity. Definitely. It's something that I'm just starting out. I'm starting to look up at cameras, starting to get kind of more of an idea of what I, I want to do for that. And so, yeah, when I get the chance, I'm I'm so tempted to make that, that September trip out there, dude. I want to go visit and just hang out. It sounds so cool. Uh, I'm trying to really find a way to make that one happen. I'm, I want that. I'd be badass. So, Well, man, I'll tell you, if you get signed up on the wait list and you don't end up getting in, uh, I actually found a spot. We were kind of talking about the idea of you doing some player interviews for the podcast while you were here. And today I went and uh, I actually got to meet with several of the other board members at the venue that we're going to be hosting our fly party at. And our host hotel is right there. It's all right next to the Grand Ole Opry and uh, the Opry Mills Resort or the uh, Opry, Gale, all the Opry stuff. Uh, so our host hotel is the Inn at Opryland, all right there on Music Valley Drive. And part of the whole deal with our room rate, which is only one twenty nine ninety nine a night. Um, so everybody that's listening, <laughs> if you're looking for a host hotel, we do have a host hotel. I did post the information today. I'll be making more posts, but 
Uh, the Inn at Opryland is is our host hotel. It's got a great rate. You're not going to find that rate anywhere else in Nashville. And they're even being so good as to provide us with a conference room throughout the course of the event that we can use for Jomez and Central Coast and Gatekeeper and all of them to set up player interview, press conference type interview spaces with backdrops and all that stuff and be able to come and go and do media stuff that way. But we're going to need somebody to represent us there to make sure that everything goes smooth and they have what they need and all that. And you'll be right there in the media studio so we can we can get you uh, interviewing people and all that stuff. So we'll find something fun for you to do if you come out here and I'll find a place for you to stay that's comfy. Um, and then on definitely, man, you go ahead. Ooh. Definitely, man. Like like you said, it sounds like a great time. And I, I was super thankful that for you even inviting me or thinking about coming out and having me help you guys out there. So uh, that's something I really want to do because, man, I've been out to Memphis. I've been out to the Heartbreak Hotel, but it's different. So Memphis is dope. I come out there for disc golf this time. Yeah, I got a lot of love for Memphis, but Nashville is its own thing, man. And that's what I've heard. Got a lot more going on. Yeah, and if we can get you here for a little bit, like you be here for the tournament, the big show and everything, and then hang out for a month afterward or something, because then you could be here for the Halloween tournament that comes up right after that. That's oh, freaking crazy. What? Uh, we go out, that sounds like well, We go out to the, uh, the private Ogwood? course. at uh, Yeah, we go out to Augwood for a whole weekend and camp out, and we well, get into some crazy stuff. But we have a C tier. Man, I've heard about Augwood. Yeah. You yeah. should come, man. It's actually yeah, a great we, course. We'll find a way for you to hang out, even if you just camp out at Augwood for a month. Stokely and his girl did that when uh, they came into town to record the audiobook. They just stayed at Augwood sweet, for like a sweet. month. So, um, yeah, definitely going to end up in Nashville here soon, man. There's no way around it. I definitely want to come out, visit, see what you guys have to offer. And well, you're c- who knows? Maybe one day I'll, I'll plant my feet out there. Who knows? Well, you know, you'd be welcomed with open arms. We've got a great community here. I'm just mainly, I mean, like, as I said earlier, I'm super excited to see you coming back and, you know, if any platform that I have, it, you know, it's definitely available to you. And if and if you come in here, we can create some videos, get some more media stuff going on for you, get some more eyes on you and what you're doing and help you kind of kind of propel you forward out there. I'm looking forward to 2022 to be a huge year for you. Have you given any thought to uh, like a tour schedule or events that you want to hit? So um, I'm currently talking to a couple people about hitting the road, getting on. Uh, I think I'm going to start out probably probably Vegas and probably go up to about Masters Cup. Uh, that's the kind of the goal right now, the plan, the idea of what I have in mind. And then after Masters Cup over in Santa Cruz, probably going to come roll back and stay at home for a little bit, a little while and, I, you know, take care of my son and take care of my practice for Worlds. You know, Worlds is I've won five in my junior, but, you know, there's always that one that I've wanted for my mom and dad. Yeah and pro the big so. show the big the big rock yeah you got any tips for us yeah that yeah Mar- uh, Mar- marcus like yeah uh, marcus likes to do this segment called tip of the week or just the tip just the tip just the tip with marcus rogers just the tip, <laughs> just the tip with marcus rogers so you uh one one tur- one tip doesn't have to be I don't like you giving the speech you like well since we're speech. since we're both dads what kind of tip would you give to dads getting into the sport or just any kind of tip that you want to give the people out there Man, okay, so Emerson Keith, that's the person I think about. He did the dad life, and he came back and everything, and almost won Worlds that year. And he was the one that really inspired me to say, hey, you know, this guy's doing it. I can do that. Um, But the tip to go along with that is just, like, if if you're going to follow something, you're going to say it, you should should go all the way through with it to prove to yourself that you can. I like it. And no matter what stops you in your way, push that thing over and keep going. My question, do you have any, like, are there any specific tricks? Because I know, I think the biggest hurdle that anybody has, obviously, I think if you were to ask a random sampling of people on a disc golf course, well, you know, do you want to go on the road? Do you want to make disc golf your career? I think you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that didn't say yes, emphatically. Yes. Um, But I know that the first big thing like that's in the way is like the idea of uprooting your entire life and making that drastic of a change. I mean, not having an address basically and just living on the move and not having a day job, not having, you know, a a rental agreement or, you know, all these things that 
the idea of that is the hardest part to get over and actually start mo- making moves towards doing it. So is there anything that you could tell people like in a specific way? Um, I, I, having these conversations is always great for people that have ambitions in the sport because you're an example that it's possible for everybody that's doing it. You know, I want, I, I think it, basically what I'm getting at is, is there anything specific that you could give to somebody that wants to make disc golf their job and get on the road and do it that could make it seem more realistic or less like a big hurdle? Or an impossibility. Finding the right support system and the friends that you have, the ones that want to push you to be better and finding the people that actually care to see where you are in life. That right there is the biggest thing that's helped me. And I have so many of those people right now in my life that are just do it, just saying, send it, go for it, do it. Just supporting me all the way. And just, if it wasn't for those select few people that I do have right there in that spot, I, I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't have the confidence that I do have right now. I wouldn't have anything without them. Yeah. That's always right. Uh, people in the right corner. Yeah. And having a good, comfortable, like a spot where you feel safe and at home to come back to. That's huge. Exactly. Yeah. So man, what's next? So obviously you've got the club, uh, the clubhouse clash at wild horse in Vegas coming up at the end of the month. That's, is that this weekend? Um, that's this weekend, that's week, that's this back weekend. to back. Gosh, I insane. haven't done back to back tournaments in so long. So I'm excited to see how this goes, man. But, yeah. um, I got, I got right now. Um, Rick solitude just opened up the other day over, over in Idaho. And that's the weekend right after, uh, after Vegas. I'm tempted to get into that one. It's going to be a little bit touchy with fair money and everything. But if not, I got, I'm going to come back home, hang out for about two weeks. I got a tournament, uh, top of the pines yep. up on that hill back there. If you can't see it. Yeah. But, um, and then after that, I, I think I have like five or six more that I'm like really invested into looking at New Mexico state championships is going to be one, but I'm not like, I'm not going to go out of my way this year to, to go out to any of the big guy tournaments where I'm going to be playing against anybody big. I think this year right now, especially because it's already so late in the year and I'm kind of making this push is I just want to get my confidence up knowing that I can go out and shoot, shoot those 10, those thousand rated rounds, those 10 twenties consistently and getting my name, getting my name to back to where it should be, getting my social media presence back to where it should be. And it's, it's just kind of putting confidence into myself for next year and, Next year is going to be the big push of where things are going to change for my, for me as a person. And I'm, uh, I'm excited for that next year. But this year is just kind of setting my feet in and getting set. Yeah. Getting the rhythm going. Yeah. Getting to, I mean, obviously you feel like you belong, but it's still, I mean, that's, uh, it's almost like just, you could play casually for 20 years, feel like, you know, your way around a disc golf course, but you've never played a tournament. And the first time you show up at one, it's, it's a mind bender. Uh, just, I mean, everything scheduling where you're supposed to be when, and, and just, it's totally different atmosphere and mindset. So, you know, getting into that zone where you're moving from one tournament to the, to the next. And that's really what you're zeroed in on and finding your way to stay sane through that. I mean, like, yeah, that's, Ooh. Definitely. Well, how can people support you? Let's go ahead and, and get that out on the air. So um, hit me up on Facebook. Come send me a chat. Let's have a good chat. Um, you know, there's many ways you guys can support me. Uh, I appreciate anything. You guys can have my PayPal. It's flylife1313 at iCloud.com. If you guys ever want to send anything, that's going to go straight to disc golf only and nothing else about that. So thank you guys if you guys do. Um, there's many other ways that we can support each other, uh, you know, places to stay, crash place here, food helping there, you know, there's many ways you guys can all help me. So if you guys want to message me on Facebook, name's Nicholas Duran, I'd be happy to, happy to talk and sit down for a while with any of you guys, because at the end of the day, you guys are all family, you know, we're out here playing for one reason and that's to be enjoying the sport at the end of the day. So, yeah, that's a good uh, point to really stress to the audience. I mean, yeah, we're at a spot now where most of the people that are on tour have a touring vehicle and they're able to pretty comfortably live in transit. 
Um, and that's, you know, all through sponsorship and, and support on the road, which you're starting from scratch. So for everybody's information, you know, the, yeah. you, the traveling that you do, you've got to take care of where you're going to sleep, what you're going to eat, all that stuff. And it adds up. So, but it's also great because disc golf is still the same sport that it used to be. And so for a person that's trying to break in at the ground level and, and just develop some momentum and get some money coming in, you know, you guys really can help in a huge way by getting a hold of him, finding out where he's going to be on the road, offering him a place to stay and a meal. Definitely. That that kind of stuff is huge, and it still happens. There, there's a lot of people trying to make a living out of this that don't have the resources to uh, put their face on the side of a van. So, um, it's all about the followers. At the end of the day, you know, we're just out here throwing a disc and playing our favorite game, our favorite sport. Right. You know, if it wasn't for you guys, even for Pine Tops you know, Finest. I look at the, yeah, fine plus fine. Thanks. <laughs> right. But uh, I, I, I still think about like all these players that are so focused on their fan base. Now you see Ricky on hole 18 over at the world. He was throwing out stickers and lollipops over there for all of his fans while he was still in the round. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, you know, it's just, it's getting that personal connection. And I, I, I want to get to know a lot of these people that are listening today. Even, at, you know, I want to get to know a lot of you guys and make you, you guys all my family. Cause that's, that's what this is. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and this was kind of, you know, one of my goals for, for this podcast too, is, you know, obviously selfishly, uh, get your story on there and, and uh, kind of show you to the audience, but like also because this is a great opportunity, these long form conversations to really give an audience, a, a, a more accurate depiction of who a person is because, you know, people every day, will sponsor a hole at a tournament 500 miles away that at a course they've never seen um, just because somebody that they know that's in that area is like, Hey, you know, if you wanted to promote your thing, you know, you can do this. So this is an opportunity for a lot of people to show you support and also get their name out there. So if you have a small business within the sport and maybe you don't have the resources to go throw in money at a Paul Macbeth or somebody like that, that is, uh, that at a certain level, like man, the uh, Nicholas Duran would be a great opportunity to get a logo on a shirt or something like that because I wanted to show everybody who you are. I've known you for a while, and I and like I know that you're legit. So this is an opportunity for anybody that's watching this, listening to this. You know, get behind a winning uh, product here because uh, Nick is only going to go up from here. I, I have full confidence in you that like, I mean, and obviously, you know, be to be reasonable your first year back in 2022, your first actual legit year on tour. Um, you know, you don't want to s- kind of set yourself on reasonable expectations and end up shooting yourself in the foot. But man, you're somebody that I think I've known for years had every bit of potential to go out there and, uh, put on a show and, I mean, you deserve to be you, uh, the the type of golf that you're capable of. You do you deserve to be on those leaderboards. You you deserve to be in the mix and having these appearances on all these big media providers and stuff. I'm stoked, man. I've been having that dream of having my mom and dad just sit down at their couch right there, and they're just all of a sudden clicking through, and they're on Jomez, and they just see, hey, that's my son. So ESPN, bro. I'm gonna make that dream come true for them, right? Damn, I'm gonna go hit a, a Conrad. <laughs> You're just in time, man. Like you, you're right. coming back right after the ESPN two deal, and uh, and this is all great, man. I'm, you know, it's one of those things. There's so many unfortunate kind of side stories to this whole uh, explosion in popularity that disc golf has had, and one of them is that because of the pandemic, like international players haven't been able to be here, and uh, so Definitely. it's stoked to see Kristen Tatar just won D Glow. Um, and she's a teammate, so I'm a little biased, but like it, it, seeing the international players get to get a little bit of the shine is dope. And you like, you know, you're a player that like, this is almost like it could have been written in debt in the stars, man. If you had popped like right after you turned 18, you know, the, there was far less eyes on disc golf at that point. Like you being able to come out swinging now that can only play in your favor. At, at the end of the day, it's, I'm out there playing my favorite sport and enjoying the weather and enjoying the <laughs> air that's around me and the nature that's around me, man. I'm trying it to is, gas you up and you that. ain't having it, man. I'm proud of you. You keep that attitude. <laughs> See? Yeah. Hey, See? Uh-huh. Hey, I, I just, I just want to stay right where I know where my lane is and stay in that positive, happy mindset. I'm not trying to let myself get too far ahead and take a step too quick. You know, I, I've done that before. So 
one shot new at mentality, a time. New mentality, new Nick. So, well, uh, man, I'm I'm super proud of you and excited that you're coming back. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to get out on the airways while we've while we've got you? I feels like we're kind of sort of wrapping this up, and I don't want to keep you too much before the popo come back around. <laughs> um, yeah, that's dude, a I, joke, by the way, everybody. Man. <laughs> it, man, there's been sirens up and down this road all week. It's bad. It's we've had some terrible weather, but and the snowbirds um, are up there anyway. too. Oh, that's terrible. You know all about it. Yep. You know about it. Oh yeah. So, um, I, I do want to say, uh, my mom and dad, thank you guys so much for absolutely everything that you guys ever done for me. You know, if it wasn't for you two watching this right now, I, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing what I do and what I love. And thank you for all the support with, with my son too. You guys have helped me beyond repair, beyond what I could even ever imagine. So thank you guys. That's, I love you guys. Thank you much. Um, a couple other small ones, man. Uh, Paul Uliberry, thank you a lot. You know what you've done for me. We've been talking lately. So thank you, Paul. And anybody else that I've just been really invested into you know joe rotan jonathan Poole. you guys have been helping me out men mentoring me here and there and stuff like that right there is the, the steps that i really need to look at and go forward from there the motivation that you guys bring to me too so and thank you guys big time like don't thank I, you i appreciate this and i'm excited for the next time that we jump on because we're gonna hang out again yeah man it's gonna be way better when we can do this in the studio and actually have you in here it, we won't have the weird lag and all that weird crap i'll just go to nashville and we'll go to the studio together how about that one sounds good man i mean and if you're you're here i mean jay just started his new job he's probably not going to be here for a little while so we, we need we, need, we might need a temporary new uh co-host hey yeah slide so, on in hey, hey man. i know a guy yeah, we're bringing, we're expanding here at the Last Cash Podcast. We're a growing brand, so this is a building year. Um, but yeah, uh, since I know your no. family's watching, hi Manny, hi Chris, hi everybody, hi the Duran Clan, and um, huh. man, yeah, we'll take good care of your boy if we can get him out here. I promise. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to having you in town, having you here in person. I'm looking forward to seeing what you do, and uh, thank you for taking the time to chat with us tonight, bro. Definitely. Thank you guys for having me. It does mean the world to me, and I, I can't wait to see what happens with us in the future, man. So, Well, uh, on that note, I won't take up any more of your time, let you get some more practice in before the sun goes down. I know you're, you've are got plenty of time. It's already uh, I got some rain coming in right behind me, so we're going to see how much I can get. All right. Well, yeah. thanks again, Nick. Shout out uh, to everybody in Arizona, and uh, we will catch you guys on the flip. Let the bass kick.